Hello there again, mister. Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. Well, you I don't mean, to make it big. I know who he is, but I don't know him at all. Alright. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. Oh, really? What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? It's the science of archaeology, Pat. <laughs> Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. So well, would I. it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavoured condoms, more likely. <laughs> Is it true that Pegram found a valuable gem? What? First I heard of it. Oh really? Where have you been, Pat? For that gem is the talk of every town from Loch Man to Ballydoon. Nobody told me. The lucky sod. So that's why he scampered. Wow. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? Here we go. I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. In other words, he needs a drink. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame oh. on you, Patrick. <laughs> Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One what point of realm you? coming up. Point again. That's the most stupidest thing I ever heard. Okay, let's see you now. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? <laughs> I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Well, go on in. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. Aha. He was speaking with the boss man. Ah, there we go. Bye for now. <laughs> Let's talk to Sini boy again. Hello. Was that a gem I just saw then? Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. You don't believe him, dear. Patrick Doyle is a moron and a scoundrel. Even so. He saw you talking to Pegram. You can't prove that, mister! Oh, damn, I need more proof. See you later. Let's go upside and talk to the kid again. Maybe he knows something. <sighs> hey, McGuire! What do you want to know? Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now, but if I sees him, I'll ask him. Right. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels oh, and gold go well. and skeletons, like in the films. Okay. Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Man would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. There you go. Fitzgerald says he's never been anywhere near the dig. He's having you on, mister. Are you sure Fitzgerald worked at the dig? Oh yes, it was him all right. Would I tell a lie? Yes. Well, he denies it. I saw them together only last night. Last I wish night? you told me that sooner. What were they doing? Pegram gave Fitzy a box. He didn't look too happy about it. I knew it. But how am I going to persuade him to part with it? Break his fingers. No, no I couldn't do that. I could. Thanks for the offer, kid, but I'll try a more subtle approach. Chinese burns? Oh, no, no, no. What's Fitzgerald scared of? 
Everything and everyone, so I shouldn't have any trouble getting him to talk. He's a pushover, but don't scare him too much. Try the soft touch. Butter him up a bit. Alright. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Are you getting somewhere at last? That's definitely a wing, I'm sure. I'm sure that was definitely a wing. Quick save. Let's play 11. No! Don't sh Hello. keep showing it to me. Maguire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. Oh god damn it, you shifty character. No! I oh, knew this would happen! I oh, knew I'd get caught! Just my luck! Grasped up by a delinquent and a dimwit! I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too if I'm right. You're not in the social security. Hell no, what makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. Yeah. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? Yeah. So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. Really? He came to see me early this morning. He said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. Okay. That name sounds familiar. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. Oh, so oh, what? Forget, you didn't forget. have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. Come on. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. <laughs> kick ass. Oh, he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris. Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. Oh. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Sure you will. Give the package to me. No! Why should I trust you? That's I don't point. know who to trust anymore! I wish I'd never even heard of the Logmarn gem! Hey, you left something on the table. Oh, what was that? Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy maker. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. No. Uh, there's nothing on the table. This must be just some coaster, whatever. Okay, let's see what all the fuss is about. Did you just say Fitzgerald got wind over? I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding my own business when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over yeah. the hill. Would you look at that, says I, and I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass, but the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy, and hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. 
I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out. And I couldn't believe my eyes. That's a dumb expression you did. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. A pixie? A pixie?